Having your own Discord server is a very fun experience, but sometimes things don't go as smoothly as you want, and I'm going to help you avoid some of those problems. For a bit of background, I founded and owned a Discord server for over four and a half years, and I've learned a lot of things along the way, and I'm going to cover a lot of those things I've learned in this video. On this channel, I usually cover things that you want to do to improve your server, but this time, let's switch things up. Let's go over the important lessons that owners usually discover along the way, so that you can make sure your server goes as planned, especially if you're just starting out. And if you are, trust me, you're going to enjoy it. So here are some things that Discord server makers should avoid when building a community that not everyone talks about. Now this video won't cover the most obvious things like set notifications to mentions only, because obviously people don't like getting a notification spam, but if you didn't know that one, well there it is, technically I threw it in anyway, so yeah, anyway. So let's start simple. So the first thing you want to avoid is pinging your server members every 5 minutes. If you are regularly going to announce things in your server, set up self-assignable roles that people can choose so that they get notified about things that they want. That way people can't complain about constantly getting picked, because that's what they signed up for. Let's say you have a community server, you have a channel, and you make videos. But your server's not just to announce your new uploads, it's also a place for people to chat and all that. So if you upload every day, pinging everyone every day might get annoying. So let's say people choose to be notified about your latest uploads. You could ping a role called Uploads, and the people that are actually interested in your channel will get notifications specifically about that, rather than pinging everyone. Now if you don't know how to set up these roles, sometimes they're called self-assignable roles, sometimes self-roles, I recommend you watch another video regarding reaction roles. Beyond not spamming everyone, self-assignable roles are a very great feature and they're very fun. They're very fun to set up, and they can really add some personality to your server. When you create roles that are for display purposes, such as self roles that we just went over, make sure you disable permissions. And you could do that by going to permissions and then clicking clear permissions. This is on desktop, I don't know how it looks on other platforms, but if you have to, turn every one of these off. Luckily this button up here makes it much easier. And by doing this, you will avoid running into the problem where someone can get extra permissions for free just by picking up a role. Because say they're a member and they have a certain amount of roles, let's say they cannot change their nickname, one of the default permissions is change nicknames. So if you added a self role and it had this permission enabled, even a member would be able to change their nickname. I've run into this problem a lot before, and whenever I make a cosmetic role like this one here, so self roles, I can make sure to clear permissions. Also, if you have a default members role as an auto role, clear permissions from at everyone, because this may also give more permissions than intended. Now I just noticed when Discord adds new features like threads, stickers, application commands, these may get enabled, so if you don't like people using application commands for some reason, you're probably going to have to go through every role and turn off permissions again for this one here. So that is kind of annoying that they're enabled by default, even if you set up the role before these features were added, so be careful of that. Don't make people boost your server in order to use emojis from other servers. Now this is a personal annoyance. They already paid for Nitro so that they can use emojis from other servers, so making them boost yours will just completely render that Nitro put redundant in your server. So say I'm in like 11 servers or something, and each one of those servers has external emojis disabled for members, and you have to boost to get them, and you have to boost to use them. Then if I bought Nitro just so I could use external emojis, well I can't, because the servers have disabled it, and that could be quite annoying. I have a feedback channel that uses tickets, this is more of a personal opinion, but I prefer to keep suggestions open to discussion, so server members can have a debate and they might actually give some good reasons to implement or to not implement the feature that someone is suggesting. This can start fights, but that can be fun to watch. Avoid pinning important information. So as you can see up here, pinned messages, this is what I'm talking about. The best way to get a user to understand what the channel is for is to use the channel topic, like I have up here as it is more likely to be read and is designed for this exact purpose. I see a lot of servers not provide channel topics and it can make navigation confusing. So if say here, I have to scroll all the way up to the top of the channel or use the search bar to get to the top result, obviously not everyone's going to want to do that. And if no one knows what your channel is for but they have to go to the pin message to, uh, to understand it, let's say not everyone will think to do that. Pinging everyone to revive a dead channel. This is not something I've seen a lot but I have seen it and it is obnoxious. If a channel has died, chances are it's inactive for good reason. If they want to talk, they would. And if you ping everyone and they're offline, they will log on later to a ping that is no longer relevant. Prevent people from creating threads and information channels. This is a new one and it's more of a personal pet peeve. 
As the permission to create threads is enabled by default, anyone can make a thread. When someone makes a thread in an information channel, the unread badge will appear next to the channel name, like it is here. And this makes it look like something new has been added to the channel, so it's just misleading, that's all. Do not make public channels announcement channels. Let's say you have a channel where you're announcing things, and people also can talk in that channel, and they can talk about the announcement. If you use a feature where you publish messages like I have here, then that's great because people can get updates in their server when you make an announcement. But if people can also talk in that channel, what I didn't know for a while was anyone can publish any message in the channel. So even if someone just joined your server, they can publish they can publish any message they want. Now I've made this mistake before, and it took me a long time to realise. Now, I don't know how many servers were spammed with published messages for my server, but it couldn't have been good. Avoid having bots use the same prefix as each other. In so many servers, trying to find the commands of a certain bot is difficult, because typing exclamation mark help has many bots flood the chat. And if I wanted the commands for me6 for example here, and if 50 other bots responded to my command, it's going to be hard to find it. And so you have to do a bit of scrolling around. Imagine trying to play a song in a music channel, and when you type exclamation mark play, it plays the same song through two bots at once. This isn't quite right, is it? Yeah, that's not quite right. If you have a member's role that is automatically assigned to people when they join a server, rather than relying on at everyone to configure their permissions, Bear in mind that if the bot you use for alter roles suddenly stops working or it goes offline, the person trying to join could get locked out of your server, because the bot can't give them the necessary permissions to view the channels. A solution could be to have multiple bots automatically assign these roles, so if one goes down, another one has a user's back. But if they all go offline then, well, the, the world is probably ending. Try to not have channels with special characters. I don't mean those lines and dots like you see here, those are fine. I mean replacing the whole text with a special font generated by special characters. This was one of my tips a while back, but I've said it before and I'll say it one more time. Bear in mind that this may make channel names buggy on other platforms. Sometimes small caps can turn into a bunch of country flags, so unless you know every flag in the world, it's probably something that the user would not understand. These special quote unquote fonts can look good, but that may not be the case for every platform. Another downside is that it can make it hard to tag channels, at least in a traditional way since this call won't autofill like you hoped. As you can see, if I try and tag this channel here, which is called yes for some reason, if I type that, it won't autofill, because I'm typing in the normal letters, because if I just type yes, those are different characters to what is actually in the channel name. So that is what I mean when I say it could be hard to tag channels. So those are some lessons I've learned over the years of owning a Discord server. And I didn't just learn these through my own server, I've learned them by being a member of some other servers. And I've noticed some mistakes people have been making when they've been owning their own server. So I made this video to help you out and make sure your to, and to make sure your server owning experience can go as smoothly as possible. If you found anything out in this video and you found anything helpful, please drop a like. I really appreciate that. And if you want more compilation videos like this, let me know. And until next time, I will see you next time. Yeah.